we can press these bad boys. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Monday, a little bit windy, but it's not too bad. Nice and sunny, finally, no more bloody rain for the next two weeks, I'm stoked about that. But today I wanna to talk to you guys about Starlink that I have on my house. So everyone in the four drive community is talking about the RV version right now. I've been running the house version for about three years since it was first announced, I put my order in for it. And it's been awesome. I've absolutely loved having it on the house. Used to have uh, Telstra services here and they were woeful, would drop out every five seconds, would just lose internet all the time. But the Starlink stuff has been awesome. So I've got the old round dish on the roof of my house. I've got the old router and all the other old hardware that, that came with that kit uh, originally. But with the close to nearly probably three years that I've actually had it, it's been awesome. Every now and again, you get like a seven second delay when you're trying to load something or whatever, but it's very, very rarely that it ever happens. It doesn't affect your streaming or anything like that, but compared to everything else that's on the market, it is just pretty much flawless when it comes to providing you with internet. So I bought the RV version uh, just recently when it was announced. There's so many different plans that you can now get. You can get one on your damn plane if you want one. You can get it on your boat get it on your caravan, on your RV, get it on your house. So they're really broadening their uh, spectrum to uh, all the different customers out there that they can actually get internet to. So I bought this version and again, like the original hardware, things change over time. And when I bought this, I thought, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Just put the, put the thing out and all the rest of it and hook the cable up. And But on my Fraser trip, I was really getting frustrated with with doing that and then trying to route it through the caravan and all the rest of it and I went there's got to be a better way of doing this so I did already know about a guy in America um star mount so he makes a full I've actually got deer I'll show you this is a full all-in-one kit from star mount so basically I'm going to cut my starlink up today and I'm going to mount my starlink into this flat panel that will this is all metal. I'm gonna mount it into this flat panel that's gonna to mount to the roof of the F truck. And then I will no longer need to run cables or anything. The Wi-Fi will admit directly from this flat panel. All I run up to this is 12 volts up into this back socket here. And then you can run an ethernet if you want to as well, direct into the back of there. But the, the truck will admit Wi-Fi completely from this flat panel and I won't need all these Starlink cables anymore. So when you get your Starlink kit, basically you get all your, your cable, you get your router and stuff, you get your stand and you get your dish. So today I'm gonna to do away with all of this and I'm just gonna use this dish and mount it into my flat case here. So getting everything set up right now, I've got my Dremel and we're gonna go through what I gotta to do to do this. So there's a fair few steps involved um, and there is a full instruction thing that I'm going to be reading through. So, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to open this up and see what's inside. So we've got these Allen key bolts here on the outside of the case. I'm guessing all the rest of the bolts are inside the case. So go through and unscrew all these. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every single step on this because it's just going to take too long and I don't have the time. But if you want to know more info information about it or see the instructions, there'll be links in the description to Starmount's website. And on there, you go to the how-to section and it has a full PDF and that on there with photos and images on how to actually do it. There's a little bit involved. It's probably going to take you, it's going to take you a fair bit of time to do it. So that's our Perspex cover. Just sit that down there on the side. <clears throat> right, so essentially just looking at kind of what's going on here. He's got his 12 volt cables that come in. They go to this little box here, run across, and this is the uh, this is the Wi-Fi admitter that's actually built into it. 
So it looks like he's he did I did have the box of the other one, I don't know where it is, but basically deconstructs this and then builds it into here. And then you've got your other cable there if you want to hardwire your internet to your laptop or whatever. Then you got um your DC to DC converter and stuff in here. And then we do have all the stuff in here we need to actually cut this out. So yeah, we go ahead and get onto this Dremel and start notching this out. But essentially, yeah, that's what's inside of it. And we're gonna flat mount our Starlink down into this. So see how we go. See if I can't ruin it. So I have the instructions here on my phone. As you can see, they're pretty pretty in depth. I'm gonna show you everything to do. So right now I'm just at the marking out stage of marking the marking this out. It says just to use a sharpie and just run around with some electrical tape and just keep a level line like that all the way around and then just meet your edges up. So that's kind of the rough area where you cut and then the top side, so this is the bottom side where the, the stand comes down back side. I've got to do a little notch up here, it says from the instructions. Right, so I've just set the depth of the Dremel uh, on here on the instructions. So I do have a Dremel tool here, this is Dremel 3000, it says to get a 4500, but Dremel's a Dremel. We'll be right. so, right oh no turning back now. I'm freaking scared. <laughs> we'll see how we go. This, this seems so wrong. I don't know why, but I'm, just, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this, so, yeah. I might just set the depth a little bit less, maybe. Because that seems like it's pretty, pretty far in, but yet again, sure. Okay, so I just wanted to like, just get through the surface and see if I'm, um, see if I'm actually piercing into anything there. So. I just don't want to damage the board if I can avoid it. Okay, so the board's pretty the board's pretty far down, so we should be sweet. Righto, moment of truth. Let's see if I stuffed it. Okay, so we got some cables. Got some cables under here that we need to disconnect. So we're gonna disconnect that one. And that one. I think we are all good. I didn't ruin it. So that's the inside of your dish. If you wanted to know. That's what it looks like. So yeah. And then I'll go around. I'll clean all these edges up. I'll get all this uh, mess out of here. Then we've got to break this apart. So we've got to break that apart and get the cables out. We've got to break these off. We've got to do a bit of wiring. So we'll keep pressing ahead, but we'll get this cleaned out and I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay, so this this little template here goes under the back side of that. You, you can do this before I cut the thing out, but essentially then that folds around and then you just line your edges up on both ends and then that gives you the little cut out there. He recommends just to cut down maybe halfway and then just lightly cut that top surface, then break it out so you don't damage the board, you don't hit the Dremel on the board because that'll be a bad time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to clean everything up and then we're going to get ready to start uh, crimping some cables and stuff like that. We're going to pull that apart. I would have hate to have been him the first time doing all this and figuring it out. And So i just got to... Where does it say to pry from in the instructions? from the corner, this top corner he's prying it from, so let's try that. Yep, there we go. And you've done it a heap of times. Oop. Right up, that's one piece of Starlink we don't need anymore. So there's your motor that controls Dishy when it does its little turn thing and sets itself up. So that's that. So we'll go ahead now and start pulling all these out. And we've got to get the cable out of the back of this thing. 
as well. So I'm going to go through the instructions and work out how to pull this apart. So we just got to you got to push this button down, then you got to get a screwdriver in and pry this out. So we're going to slide this out of the end of the pole, just like so. If I can get it out, this feels so wrong and so. I feel like I'm going to break something. So I just want to make sure that cable's free to come through when I actually pull this out. Oh, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to cut this off here with a Stanley knife. I started cutting it with a Dremel, but yeah, definitely not easy to get off. Just want to be very careful we don't cut through the cable. I do not want to cut through the cable because that's going to be a shit time. So that piece right there, got to try and get that off. That's actually a that's actually a magnet. That bit there. So we're going to crack that off with a hammer on the ground, apparently. Alright, so I got the I got the magnet, this rubber thing. I just cut down one side of it, and then just went and gave it a light little tap on the ground with a hammer, and it just cracked, and I just peeled it away. So that's pretty easy. Okay, so now this is the part where. I have to cut this thing off, so I've got the instructions here, it's telling me to cut off two inches. So obviously Australia, we, I've got American tapes because I spend so much time in bloody America that... Yeah, so we're going to cut that off about there by the look of it. And we're going to mark that with our sharpie. So I'm going to cut him right there. I'm going to double check the instructions and make sure I'm doing the right thing. So mark it four inches, so from here four inches to there, and then you can mark it and then cut it off. So here we go. I don't like seeing those wires like that, but anyway, so there's the end of our plug gone. Under the next one, then we're going to cut two inches down the line. So when you got cut, we're going to remove the, the white sheath two inches down, so we'll mark that again with our sharpie. Again, all these measurements are so that way you don't have heaps of extra cable built up inside the the new star mount. So now we'll remove the little foil protector. Now we have our wires. So this is the fun part. Now we've got to put on. <laughs> I've never done one of these before, so this will be interesting. Now we've got to put this onto here. So it says that I'm going to need a, I think it's an RJ45 crimp tool, which I don't have. So I'm going to have to go and get one of them, the Savo, and then get back to putting this together. But you've got the pin layout card here that he includes in the thing. So that's, that's nice and handy. So the pin layout card's just there. So it tells you what way the pins, what way all these what way all these wires go. Okay, so it's about two hours later. I had to go down and pick up a set of these uh, RJ45 crimp tools to be able to crimp the wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get the wiring crimped on, get this little doobie put onto here. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see in the sun, but I've got the, uh, the tool here that we need. So essentially that'll push up into there. And it's gonna crimp down all these little wires into, into each other. I think it goes in like that. And I think that pushes those. I think that pushes those up into the wire. I think we're right, I'm not too sure, but it's, my, it's just my first time doing one of those data sort of cables, so well, I guess we can just try it and see how we go. That goes in there, like that, I'm going to put a zip tie around that, and it runs up through this little cutout, comes around here like that, get zip tied there, so we've got, we've got two zip ties that are included in the kit, so... Pretty cool little setup, this thing. So, that's that. We'll cut that off. And we'll 
I'll zip tie this one up. It'd be cool once he gets these dialed in and even if he like starts making them out of aircraft aluminium or something. That would be absolutely awesome, like something super, super light. Now we connect this to the board. So bring our board down. Connect our wire in, in the back side. And that's it. I've cut it bloody perfect too. So what you want, you want this sitting lower than the rim and then the O-ring. So that way when you squish, it, squish down the O-ring, you don't have any moisture come into the star mount. Let's give us a little bit of a wipe down. Sorry about the sun and the shadows. It just is what it is. So now we're gonna go ahead and bolt this down. Same way we put it on. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rip the, um, gonna rip the backing off this Perspex. Pull this layer off. But it's definitely a nice little, a nice little uh, setup. This thing looks pretty cool. So we've got all our Allen key bolts here. Go ahead and start screwing all these down. It doesn't say to use a drill, you should just use an Allen key, but I just went down lightly, put the drill on the on its minimum and just, just put all them down so far and then just went around and just nipped them all up with the with the Allen key. So I can't really see if there's any specs to tighten these down to, but I guess you just you just want to squish that. You don't want to be like cranking down on these things. I just I'm just going like that along little nip up. You just you're only sealing that. That O-ring that runs around there to stop any moisture coming into the dish itself. You definitely don't want any moisture getting in there because it will it will ruin all that electrical board that's behind dishy. And we'll get this thing mounted up on the truck and see if it uh see if it works. So this is what I've done with that uh, power outlet that come in the box. I've cut the obviously the battery terminals off. I've cut them off. And I've fitted an Anderson plug, which is way more common here in Australia. And the reason why I've done that as well is because the Anderson, I have three Andersons in the back of the F-Trucks canopy that are wired through my Anadrive system. So if I go through the Anderson and power this, I can then monitor how much power it's using uh, if I'm going through the Anderson circuit that's already fused and switched and everything through the canopy rather than just connecting it directly to a battery because um, obviously there's no switch in here to turn it on and off. So if I go through that, I can monitor how much power it's going to be using. Um, yeah, so that's exactly why I've, I've cut the, uh, the ring terminals off there and put on, the, put on the Anderson plug. So it recommends that you shouldn't do that, but when you know what you're doing with wiring, this should not affect this at all. It should be all good. So this is the F-Trucks canopy. So essentially what I've done is I've, bolted the little little dc uh, module around there so it's got plenty of ventilation and stuff to, to cool down just bolted it in there and then i've run the wires up and around the inverter and i've just got them coming back out of out of this notch here and these will go out through a gland and then they'll go up zip tie up to the the roof rack up there and then uh yeah we'll mount the the starlink the new star mount Starlink up there on the roof. And I'm using utilizing this Anderson here that's already wired into the into the power system that's in the in the truck. So it's already fused. So right now we're doubly fused. So it's got 30 amp fuse that it come with standard. I've put the Anderson on, on there. And then this circuit here is fused and switched over the other side as well. So all good. All ran in there. And um, yeah, so now I'm just gonna get this wire here. I'm gonna drill a hole up here, put a gland in, uh, similar to what's already on the back of the, the canopy. I'll show you just around in there if you can see it. So that's a gland. So the wiring's going up through there. I've got our gland 
our gland fitted. Wiring come back out that side, out the gland. Up onto the roof. Righto, so there we have it. All mounted up, power running in. Time to do some uh, final tests and stuff like that. And I'll, yeah, I might do another video on the speeds that I'm getting uh, across the desert and how it's performing. So we'll do a, do a test run and see if it's all working all good.